Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. Today I'd like to talk about the photoelectric effect. Photoelectric effect. It's very similar to the photovoltaic effect. And here we have a photovoltaic cell, and you can see that it's generating a voltage just over 3 volts. So the two effects are very similar in that light photons photo fall on a metal and electrons are emitted and in the photovoltaic effect the electrons are emitted onto a wire which goes to our voltmeter. In the photoelectric effect the electrons are emitted into a vacuum. Let's start with we have a nucleus of an atom. Right there is your nucleus of the atom. And you will remember that we have energy levels and orbitals. So as we go further away from the atom, so we have higher energy levels. And orbitals, which contain electrons with greater amounts of energy. Now let's suppose we have an electron here in what we call its ground state. In other words, an electron that's sitting as close to the nucleus has got the least amount of energy possible. Now we give it energy, let's suppose in the form of heat. The electron can be excited to a higher energy level, depending on how much energy we give it. And as we give it more energy, so the electron will be more and more excited to higher and higher energy levels. Now let's just suppose that our electron is, has been excited quite far away from the nucleus. So here's your positive nucleus, here's your negative electron. And now let's just suppose that it falls back into its ground state. As it falls, it must give out the amount of energy that it was given. So let's just suppose that this electron just was given a little bit of energy and it falls back and as it does so it gives off a little bit of energy say red which is light with a low amount of energy or let's suppose that it falls from a higher distance and it gives off orange light which is light with a slightly greater amount of energy or let's suppose that it falls all the way from a very high energy level and it gives off violet and then maybe if it falls from here it gives off blue or if it falls from an even lower distance green or what if it falls from a slightly lesser distance it will give off yellow light. So we go violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. So if it's the greatest distance that it falls it means that it was given initially more energy and as it falls it gives out violet light which means that it has got a very high wave, uh, frequency, a very short wavelength and here we have photons, if you can imagine that this wave also has some particle properties. I like to think of it as a bead, beads on a necklace. You can think of it any way you like. Imagine a necklace that's composed of little beads. And as you shake this necklace, so the photons or beads fly off this necklace. That's the way I like to think of it. It's just a, a way to help one remember it. And as these are being shaken very violently, so we get photons flying off in the form of different colors of light or different wavelengths. Not only do they consist of waves, but the waves also, if you want to think of it, consist of particles. So your wave is your necklace that's been shaken, and as it's shaken, little particles or beads or photons of light, let's say, fly off. This is an analogy. Now, this photon of light has a certain amount of energy, okay? And there's the energy. Now this amount of energy can, when it hits a 
when it hits another metal, what are the three things that can happen? First of all, if there's too little energy, say red light, nothing happens. The photon hits an electron, nothing happens. It's not got enough energy to loosen the electron. That's the first thing that can happen. The second thing that can happen is, let's say we have um, yellow light hitting. It's got a little bit more energy than red. It hits the electron of the metal and the electron just comes loose. But there's no extra energy. So that's the second thing that can happen. The third thing that can happen is, let's say we have violet light. Photon hits in the electron. There's enough energy to get it loose. That's the work function. And there's leftover energy. And that goes into kinetic energy. And that chases and gives a velocity to the uh, electron of the metal. So those are your three things that can happen. Low energy, which means they have a low frequency, long wavelength um, light, will not be able to do anything to the electron. It will not turn the electron into a photoelectron. When we have, let's say, slightly more energy light, yellow, it will get the electron to, say, just dislodge from the metal, but nothing else can happen to it. It doesn't have enough energy to give it kinetic energy. And then as we go to the higher wavelengths, the violet, let's say, or inf uh, ultraviolet, the photon hits the electron, turns it into a photoelectron, means it comes loose, and there's enough energy to make it fly off with a certain velocity. So the kinetic energy, leftover energy, goes into half mv squared. And that, we remember, is our normal kinetic energy formula. All of these formulae here are just part of this one formula. So, in other words, if we have a certain amount of energy coming in, it's equal to hf. Energy is, of the photon is equal to hf. So they're the one and the same thing. E equals HF. Now, HF can be HF naught. HF and HF naught are the same thing. That HF naught is simply the cutoff frequency that is just enough energy to loosen the electron. So HF and HF naught are the same thing. It's just a specific case of HF. So that's the, the work function is the minimum frequency that will get the electron to dislodge. So W naught equals HF naught. So those two concepts are the same. Planck's constant times the, the cutoff frequency is equal to the work function. So we haven't introduced any new formulae. Basically, everything is still HF. And then the leftover HF goes into kinetic energy. So this is HF, that's HF, and that's leftover HF. So the amount of energy in a photon is E is HF. We, the, we take from this HF enough HF to give it its work function to dislodge the electron. So that's HF, but HF naught, the minimum amount. And there's leftover HF. So once you get that solidly in your mind, that every photon has got a certain amount of HF, is it enough? HF to, to loosen it, in other words, is the HF naught realized? Is the frequency high enough to dislodge the electron? If it is, then will there also be a little bit extra energy to give it kinetic energy? Now, in the exams, there are two things that, two concepts that you have to be clear of. There's light intensity and then there's light frequency. Light intensity, light frequency. We've explained that the the colors of the light, that is the light frequency. So if there's a high enough frequency, an electron can come off. Now, what happens when there's a change in intensity? Well, if you have a super high intensity, that means a very bright red light, nothing will still happen. You might have a very bright orange light, but if it has not got enough high enough frequency, that orange light will not cause any photoelectron. Say yellow is our cutoff frequency. At yellow, now we start to get a photoelectric effect. But now as we crank up the intensity, so our yellow light gets brighter and brighter and brighter yellow, 
all that's going to happen is more photoelectrons are given off. So only when you reach your cutoff frequency, then when you increase the intensity of the, of the light source, so you get more photo, photons given off and therefore you get more photoelectrons. So don't let them fool you. You can have the brightest red or orange light. If that frequency does not reach the cutoff frequency, there will be no work function, there will be no photoelectric effect. However, once you reach, let's say the cutoff frequency is yellow, then as you give a brighter and brighter yellow, so you will get more and more electrons that will start to off fly off in huge numbers and so you will get ultimately let's say a greater current of electricity if you can capture those electrons. So the intensity leads to greater current. The frequency will determine whether you have got enough energy in the photons for anything to happen at all. So those are, that is what the questions in the exams uh, revolves around. Intensity and frequency and they will try to catch you because there's only those simple concepts that you have to know. If, if the frequency is not the cutoff frequency, it doesn't matter what the intensity is, no photoelectrons. However, once you reach the cutoff frequency and your cutoff frequency will give you a work function, now the more brighter the intensity the more photoelectrons, so we have a greater number of photoelectrons. So they will try to confuse you with the frequency. The higher the frequency, the more kinetic energy. The higher the intensity, the greater number of electrons are given off. So frequency determines the, the, the kinetic energy Intensity determines the number of electrons given off. So those are the two concepts that they will explore with you in the exam. And just to show you again the difference between frequency and intensity. Right. So here we see our LEDs will turn on in order of their frequency. But after they've turned on, watch their intensity increase. So they get brighter, in other words. So the frequency, the lower the frequency, the quicker they turn on. But as we crank up the voltage, so their intensity or brightness of the LEDs increases. And so again, we will reach, let's say, yellow, which is enough frequency to, to uh, create photoelectrons and then as we get a higher intensity so we will get greater numbers of electrons. Now I'm going to act out the photoelectric effect. I'm going to pretend that I am an electron. <laughs> uh, here's my cat. <laughs> also wants to be in, in the picture. Right, I'm going to pretend that I am an electron sitting on a metal and I'm going to be hit by red, too low frequency, below the cattle frequency, not enough energy for the work function. Hit by a yellow photon, it's enough energy to just make me stand up, in other words, it's for my it's, a, it's a, the cutoff frequency and there's enough for the work function but not enough for kinetic energy. Or I get hit by a blue photon, that's enough to overcome the work function and give me a little bit of kinetic energy so I can run.